Michael Newton, Life Between Lives Therapy. So I've long been fascinated, like many people, with what happens to us after we die. And in my experience, has been basically perhaps three camps or so of thought related to that. One is the past life regression therapy and life between lives therapy regression that Michael Newton is famous for. And I've read his books and he's fascinating and I've just learned it's changed my whole life in terms of perspective. When I view things now, I view them increasingly in terms of spiritual lessons. And when I meet someone, it's kind of like a divine interaction because I know that according to Michael Newton's work, and it makes sense to me, his interviews are extremely compelling that basically people are messengers and they come into our lives too. It's easy to feel like adversarial sometimes, but challenges are really, you know, learning opportunities, teachable moments for us to uh, become, as the famous saying says, better angels of our nature. So the first camp has to do with like past life regression and life between lives. The second uh, uh, group of people that focus on spiritual matters tend to be what I call like the law of attraction crowd. Those don't focus so much on souls and, and soul beings per se as they do in terms of spiritual principles of the universe. I've written 18 books and several of them focus on the spiritual laws of success. And uh, some people have called me the uh, Napoleon Hill of today because my my style is, I think, and other people have said very much the style of Napoleon Hill in terms of like how the mind creates our reality and, you know, is famously said that as, as, as a person thinks, you know, so they are. Even the Bible says, as within, so without. So my background is in psychology. I was a therapist for a number of years, not a past life therapist, but a regular, you know, therapist. And I've always been fascinated with the mind and how it works. And I think that the spiritual laws of the universe are are so fundamental to what we do and, and who we are and uh, you know, need to be well understood to have a meaningful and, and happy life. And I think the third camp of people that, you know, talk about spiritual matters tend to be more traditional, you know, religion, whether it be traditional Christians that talk about Jesus or Muslims or Hindus or whatever the religion might be. So I think there's three different camps. So a little bit my, more about Michael Newton and my interest there. I think that um, I think that I've been successful in business and life. I mean, success is kind of a dangerous word because just like there's many different kinds of intelligence, there's many different levels of success. But I do feel like I've attracted, you know, good people to work with me. And I feel that God or the universe or whatever you believe in has kind of like seeded a lot of good ideas and the ability to execute them and a willingness to work hard and a willingness to be guided by love and by spirit. So one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is because I want to, if it's my time and place and others are willing to attract more good people in this area, like I've attracted a lot of good people in business and e-commerce, but I haven't really put a lot of energy and focus into attracting, you know, spiritual guidance and beings. I mean, I've I've done some res some thinking and research lately also on spirit guides and 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 soulmates and other things, and I think that there's always entities that come into our lives both on this plane and in other planes, and a couple just a few other ideas about. Michael Newton and Lives Between Lives that I want to explore in this um, in this podcast episode. So, you know, I've covered some of these topics in, in great depth in, in my books and in other videos. So on this video, I want to focus more on the Lives Between Lives and Michael Newton's work and, and a few observations and a few questions. So... I'm at the point in my life now where I feel that I want or need to attract more people that have this understanding to 
be able to make progress on the next steps of my life and my purpose. And let me try to make that a little bit more concrete. Like, I've always been a connector. Like, in business, I've been able to connect, you know, customers, like, just a, a brief synopsis. I mean, Existentials, Exponentials is a is my company in which we follow people's intrinsic interests to help them do personal discovery to become the best version of themselves. So if you love art, you know, it's, 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 you know, an incredible experience to find more information on that. If you like sports, if you like health, if you like, uh, I mean, we focus on certain verticals, but, and then we use AI to, uh, to link e-commerce to it. So the whole idea is that, you know, rather than bombarding people with advertising, you know, that they don't want, there's all, all kinds of ad blockers, just follow people on their inherent interests, like the things that you love. Like nobody has to tell you to spend time with your kids or your family, you know, if you enjoy doing that, or nobody has to tell you to spend time or be interested in your passions and your hobbies and the things that you love to do because you just love to do them. And I, I feel like that same kind of connection that I've done in business and e-commerce in terms of just becoming your best self and uh, living your best life, I would like to do on a more spiritual world, but I I haven't perhaps been elevated enough previously to spend enough of my time focusing on that to bring it together. So I have talked to a few past life therapists and it's been like incredibly illuminating. I I may actually do some of the sessions myself. Um, I think that I want to find a way, and I'm not sure exactly how to do it, to tap into people that are leaders in the field to build like either a community or products that make it more widely accessible. Like, I'm not an expert in the in the past life therapy uh, network, but my sense of it that it's, it's a lot of solo practitioners. I mean, I know Michael Newton does have uh, a website now that he's deceased where, you know, people can be found. But I, th- I think just from talking with a few of them that it's it's not really something that has reached a critical mass of awareness. Like I think Michael Newton's books and a few other people that have written like, uh, you know, the famous book Life After Life and a few other famous books have reached, you know, a number of people. But I think it's a movement that is kind of fragmented and not as consolidated. And I think that I have cons- I have skills in terms of like consolidation and helping small markets become big markets. And I would like to do that if possible with Life Between Lives therapists, but I don't know, you know, if that's something that the people that are in the field also want to do. I mean, obviously people want to reach a larger audience. So I'm just reaching out to people that want to have a bigger influence and feel called to connect with others that are doing similar work and work in a way with established methods to be able to do that. So this is my call to to life between life therapists to expand their reach and I'm I'm happy to help do that.